As we see many times in Bible Alive, when we come to these stories that we're so familiar with, we're all of us, many of us, and sometimes all of us, encumbered and hamstrung by a spurious familiarity. We've heard the story so many times given to us and we've interpreted them, whether we've known it or not, through the lens of our own culture. We think we understand what we're reading. We think we're familiar with it, the stories of the Bible, but in reality, we're all, our familiarity is spurious. We are guilty of a spurious familiarity. Well, my friends, I gotta tell you that for even biblical scholars, this is also true. Except for biblical scholars, they have a more sophisticated, scholarly, spurious familiarity. Modern scholars who deal with biblical Israel's ancient political religion and the prophets who proclaimed its transformation are burdened with a scholarly, spurious familiarity. This spurious familiarity derives from 18th and 19th century Northern European ideology and categorization which support the attempts of late 20th and early 21st century scholars and theologians to maintain continuity with their past Northern European theological ideology. So, such biblical scholars, mainstream, and theologians think that a good interpretation of the biblical data is one that fits in terms with the past Northern European theological ideology. People who are ideologically indisposed to a different perspective invariably adhere to this received view. They will refer to Mark chapter 13 and its synoptic parallels in Matthew and Luke as the synoptic apocalypse or as an eschatological discourse. Apocalyptic and eschatology are two anglicized German theological words used to label temporal dimensions of New Testament theology. They are ways to describe time in New Testament theology. Like those other Germanisms, salvation history and delay of the parousia, which we'll get to momentarily, the labels apocalyptic and eschatology are inaccurate and misleading whenever they are applied to biblical documents or any other documents of the first century Mediterranean world. The most we can say, Bruce, Bruce Molina is convinced that the most we can say is that if New Testament documents, instead of being first century Mediterranean, Middle Eastern Israelite documents, were instead 19th century German compositions, then in that case, what they say would be understood, as German theologians explained it, in terms of German conceptions of eschatology and apocalyptic. By the way, are the New Testament documents German documents? Oh, okay. So I guess we can take away those words then. Huh? You were translated. Yeah, and every translation is a betrayal. And when you move the language, whether it's words or sentences, you change the meaning. Bruce Molina explains that, in point of chronological fact, 18th century Europe gave us, Western Christians, the categories of salvation history, and of fact and fiction, and of the Bible as a narrative or story, a body of literature with character, plot, and setting, much like any other novel of the time. The 19th century gave us eschatology and apocalyptic, eschatological delay, delay of the parousia, all categories deriving from and relevant to European salvation history formulas. 
Eschatology was coined in 1804 by the German K.G. Brettschneider. That's where we get his word, the word. Yes, it's taken from Greek, ancient Greek, but it's a German word, really, designed by him and designated as the last, it's used to designate what was originally called by the church the last things that were to befall humans individually, studied in treatise, treatises aptly titled De Novissimus, concerning the latest. You know those last things, right? We are supposed to focus on those last things as Catholics in the month of November. Beginning of Advent. Folks, through a rather interesting pathway, the term eschatology got attached to the presumably last things of humanity in general. These last things were allegedly derived from the Bible. Whether they were there actually or not is a different matter. As is usual with creative hermeneutics, known in the 19th century as appropriations. That's eschatology. Now, as for the term apocalyptic, it was the German scholar F. Luch in 1852 who decided to use the, the Greek word apocalypsis or apocalypse as a label for the genre or category of the book of Revelation and documents presumably similar to it such as the book of Daniel and those Israelite writings called Enoch for Ezra and Baruch. This usage continues in introductions to literary forms in the Bible, like this one, and also this one by Dr. Bart Ehrman, 